highly skilled job. Uh, it requires enormous amounts of concentration throughout the whole day. Yeah. In many ways, I feel like I've always been a designer from the time I was born. I grew up in a family where both of my parents were artists, so that ability to make things was always a possibility in life. And I like to think that actually Cork chose me. It was when I was in graduate school, I had very little money to buy materials, and I found someone who was selling a really large amount of like scrap cork that they were trying to get rid of for a small amount of money, so I bought it. So I had the freedom to experiment and as I did that, I realized this material is incredible. It works in ways that, that other materials that we build objects from, they don't work that way. Welcome to it's Casa d'Architettura. I hope you enjoy everything you're about to see. We spend almost our entire life within the confines, within the, the borders of architecture. Yes. Unless we're out in the nature, which is a very small part of our life, most of our life, if we're living, working, it's all architecture, right? It's all architecture. I think what makes me unique from other designers is that I'm actually obsessed with one material, which is cork. Um, I know a lot of other designers, friends of mine, who use all of these different materials, and that's wonderful because they create beautiful things as well. But I have this obsession with a single material that I'm really in love with, and I think that's what makes me different. One thing that I've learned after years of working with people in designing objects for them is that they like the way the cork feels. I found there's a lot of advantages to keeping the texture mm -hmm. because we have this assumption that like wood products need to be smooth. Exactly. Cork is a different kind of wood product, so the rules it's are different. True. It's true. So the experience can be different. So they like the customers like the texture. I've been working with emerine cork composites for over 15 years now, and one thing that I found is that the people who work there really understand that they're working with the material which could help make the world a better place. And so they're always looking for new opportunities to use materials, not only for making the stoppers for wine, which is very important, but also to use materials in space and architecture and in our lives in, in new ways, which is the same as what I'm doing. So I feel like we've had a very symbiotic and collaborative relationship that I'm, I'm very happy about. The, the cork oak tree and the forests of the trees, the connection between them, has such a degree of resistance to threat, resistance to fire, and also resilience in the system when there is a fire, when there is a threat. So it's this combination of resistance and resilience, which is really incredible. And I think that's a new area that's... You're right. And you want to know how resilient they can get? So even if you have a fire yeah. and, and, and the cork gets burned, if you take away that burned cork, the tree resets itself automatically to its nine-year growth plan. Is that right? How amazing is that? So it like resets its own clock? Yeah. Right. The way that we live now in the world is not sustainable. And the world that we've created that we're living within now is having problems. I would say it's failing. So we need to think of new ways to build new worlds. And so cork is a great example of that. It's a material that comes from a tree. It doesn't destroy the tree, it makes the tree stronger. So he worked with a, a Murin and they developed uh, this new material made by concrete and cork that was lighter enough to be able to build this. From an ecological standpoint, if 30% of this is cork, that's 30% less concrete that's being used. And concrete is a very difficult material for the environment, ecologically speaking. Design has one of the most important responsibilities for a sustainable future. If the objects that we're designing are good objects that are good for the world and good for us, then our life will also be good. The project at the very beginning happened as I was finishing my studies. I designed a, a lounge chair made from cork called the Cortisa lounge chair. It was a simple idea because I realized that cork had this amazing ability to bend and move in ways that other materials couldn't bend and move. So I'm inspired by the idea that the experience of a material can allow us to experience the world in a new way. 
A recent project that I completed was a new showroom uh, for Google uh, who opened their first retail store in New York City to show their objects and their products, almost entirely out of cork, also made from some wood from the oak tree as well. But that's a project that I feel fulfilled by because it's really a much larger scale than project than anything I had taken on. And we were able to do it through the, the difficulties of the pandemic. So that was a very fulfilling project. One of the things that I'm writing about now in this book that I'm writing about Cork is the notion of ecological thinking and, yes. and ecological thinking being yes. like kind of the, the true essence of the way nature works and that we may think of an instrument as an isolated entity unto itself, yeah. but in fact, instruments can be interwoven or inter interconnected Absolutely. systems of people and objects working together to produce a single result. Yeah. So it, it connects to this whole notion of thinking ecologically, yeah. of, some, of a thing being made up of a system of yeah. connected people or connected objects. As a professor at Parsons, I do pass on my love with cork. Um, most of the time, it's very simple. Students come to me and they want to make something out of cork and how do I get it? So I help them get it. <laughs> I've realized that my practice as a designer uh, makes my teaching better and that my teaching also breathes life into my practice. And so it's a cycle of, it's a cycle of life, really. And that's taken a long time to find that kind of balance, but the balance is something that's really essential. Without teaching, my, my design, I don't think, would be as healthy. And I know that my teaching wouldn't be as healthy if I was not a practicing designer. This is fantastic. I mean, the way that the exhibition provides a portrait of this architect. This is very unique. It's not a, a, the usual sort of architecture museum. It's really wonderful. It took me a few years to realize is that my work doesn't really take itself too seriously. My work is kind of happy, it's kind of fun, and it reflects the way that I try to be in life, you know? I like to joke around, I like to be goofy, and I think that sometimes my work reflects that as well.